Greetings, everybody. Learning as a hobby here. Uh, I want to do a vlog today, a kind of different video, um, because my birthday is coming up. Uh, it's not today, but it's in a few days. Uh, and around this time of year, I get to, you know, feeling a little bit melancholy. Maybe some of you feel the same when you get to when it gets around your birthday time. So I thought <clears throat> that I would uh, make a video to cheer myself up a little bit by looking at some of my favorite things that uh, I picked up this year. Uh, I know that I said that uh, I wasn't going to be doing book videos anymore on the channel, but I think um, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll bring them back twice a year. <laughs> so I'll do it on my birthday and then uh, maybe for cr around Christmas time, I'll do like a, you know, a gift suggestion video um, because people seem to like those. And uh, I don't want it to make it, I don't want to make it the focus of the channel. So maybe two times a year is, is uh, good enough. <laughs> but anyway, uh, talking about some of my favorite things will should cheer me up anyway. Um, so let me start by uh, going through, you know, a bunch of stuff that I got this year, um, some of which is, is math related and science related, uh, but some of which is not. Some is related to uh, my other hobbies, which um, if you don't know, I have a um, a gaming channel and um, I have a, um, a movie channel also uh, on YouTube. But uh, so let, maybe I should start with um, some of those things. Let's see. What can I what can I start with? I think. Uh, I probably should have planned this out before. <laughs> I just got a bunch of stuff sitting next to me. Um, all right, I'm going to start with um, movie stuff. So the first thing is um, I'm a very big sci fan of science fiction and horror. Um, you know, books, movies, et cetera, et cetera. And there's one movie that is one of my favorites that uh, doesn't get a whole lot of love, unfortunately. Um, and I had the, the DVD of it for a long time, but it was a, of an older copy and it was very low quality. Um, but recently uh, it's been chosen to get, a, you know, the works done to it. So it's been remastered and put on in high definition and everything. Uh, and when I heard about this, I was so excited. I immediately went and ordered a copy and that's what I have here. This is one of the, my birthday gifts to myself. Um, Invaders from Mars, if you haven't seen this movie uh, and you're a fan of uh, 50s style science fiction, uh, then you should check this out if you haven't seen it. If you're a fan of 50 science fiction, I don't know why you wouldn't have seen this, but um, they do have a, a new version. So it's remastered. Uh, they cleaned everything up and this has like a bunch of uh, special features on it that I haven't had a chance to look at yet, unfortunately. Um, so the, you know, that's, that's a lot. I, I, I'm really happy that I, that I was able to pick this up and that they decided to, um, you know, show the, the movie, some of the, the recognition that it deserves. So this is one of my, like I said, one of my birthday presents to myself. Um, so if, I would definitely recommend the movie if you haven't seen it. <clears throat> so that's um, one thing. Uh, another, some, a couple other things I picked up um, over the year related to uh, movies is uh, I'm a, uh, again, a, a big horror and science fiction fan. Um, I wish I had picked up, uh, one of my favorite books is um, Keep Watching the Skies by Bill Warren. Um, it's basically a compendium of uh, all the American science fiction movies that were made from like 1948 to like 19, uh, I don't know, 61 or something. It's it's a little huge swath of time. It's a giant book. Uh, and it's one of my favorites. He, he basically writes uh, an article about each American uh, science fiction movie from through those, those time periods. But another one of my favorite critics is Tom Weaver. And I got a couple of his books uh, this year. Um, this was like back at the beginning of the year. Um, this is Universal Horrors, where he talks all about uh, Universal's, you know, uh, monster movies. Um, so this is this has been a, a good read. I, I obviously haven't gone through all of it, but you don't have to read, you know, it from cover to cover. You can pick a movie that you want to read about and uh, you can, um, you know, learn all about it from Tom Weaver. Um, right now, uh, you, as you can see, uh, I'm in the middle of reading the chapter on um Dracula 1931 uh, with Bela Lugosi. Um, 
he also has uh, another book. He has a bunch of books, but these are the two that I got. Uh, the Creature Chronicles, uh, exploring the Black Lagoon trilogy. Uh, the Creature from the Black Lagoon is also one of my favorite movies, which you should watch if you haven't seen it. There's actually three of them. Um, but if you haven't seen the, the Creature from the Black Lagoon and you're a fan of science fiction and monsters, uh, go check it out. It's a great movie. Um, so this is all about the the Creature trilogy. And these are really well written and high quality. If you look this like color images and everything in it. Um, I haven't started on this one yet, but like I said, I, I, I'm in the middle of reading about uh, um, the Universal Dracula movie from 1931, Todd Browning and, and Bela Lugosi and so on. Um, and last uh, bit of science fiction stuff, I think here is uh, Paul Nahin, who you may know, he, he's a, a prolific math uh, and science pop writer i guess uh, he he wrote he has a bunch of books on different math topics and <clears throat> physics and things like that um he wrote that book i talked about a long time ago about uh, uh interesting integrals um inside interesting integrals it's a, basically a recreational math book <laughs> excuse me i still have this cough a little bit um where he talks about you know interesting integrals and you know Notor I guess like notorious integrals that are difficult to solve and the, the uh, uh, really clever ways that people figured out how to solve them. But anyway, he, he also is a, a fan of science fiction, as you know, might not be surprising. A lot of science and math people are fans of science fiction. Why not? Right. Um, so he has a couple of books on science fiction. Um, one is Holy Sci-Fi where science fiction and religion intersect. I uh, haven't had a chance to start on this one yet, uh, but I picked this one, one up this year. Um, and I'm looking forward to, to reading about that. Uh, he also has a book on Time Machine Tales. Oh, I should also say these are from Springer, by the way. Uh, these are Springer titles. Um, this one is called uh, Time Machine Tales, The Science Fiction Adventures and Philosophical Puzzles of Time Travel by Paul Nahin. Um, and I haven't started on this one either. Uh, I figured I would get, I would try to read through this on uh, a train trip, which I might do because uh, I have a trip coming up uh, um, not that far away. But um, yeah, this might be a fun read to, to bring on the train. So that might be something I bring with me. Um, <coughs> okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, let's do the other... Um, Oh, he, actually, this is tangential to science fiction. Let me let me talk about this first, and then I'll, I'll get to my other hobby stuff, and then we'll end with math. Um, I in an older video that I made, uh, I talked about some of Isaac Asimov's books that I that I have. He's one of my favorite writers. Um, I have not all of his books because he's he was a very pro prolific writer. But I have a, a large majority of them. And you may or may not know, but he also wrote, in, in addition to science fiction stories, he also wrote on uh, sundry other topics. Like he has a bunch of textbooks on physics and chemistry uh, written sort of for like a, a lay audience, I guess. Um, but he also has books on other topics as well. Uh, for example, he has uh, he wrote a guide to the Bible. Uh, Asimov's Guide to the Bible. Uh, this is actually two volumes in one. I found a cheap used copy online, uh, so I decided to pick it up. Um, I'm not really religious, but that's neither here nor there. If you are, that's fine. I, I, I have nothing, you know. But uh, the Bible, you know, is obviously a important part of culture. So, um, yeah, this is kind of interesting. I, I haven't I just got this a, 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 like a week or two ago, so I haven't really had a chance to look through it too much. But um, I'm interested in what I'm interested in what he, I don't know what he has to say about the Bible. I believe uh, Isaac Asimov was Jewish. Um, I don't know if he practiced or not, but uh, anyway, it, it's an, an interesting book to pick up. So um, yeah, that's one I picked up recently, um, and also I, I got another book by him uh, also used i found a nice used uh, cheap used copy um where this is his um updated and illustrated asimov's chronology of science and discovery how science has shaped the world an oracle particularly in the world of science uh, oh that's the quote by time 
um, by Isaac Asimov. So it's a sort of like a, a chronology of the development of science from like the dawn of man up until, well, at least uh, contemporary times with when he was alive. So you could see it's it's written as a chronology. Um, and I was reading this book in my school's library for a while. And then um, I guess someone either borrowed, you know, took it out or someone took it off the shelf and the, the uh, librarians picked it up and maybe they'll put it back in the shelf or whatever. But uh, I, I was in the middle of like, you know, I, I got pretty de decently far into it uh, and then the book disappeared off the shelf. So <laughs> I was like, oh, man, because uh, I was really getting into it. Um, so I figured I, I'd see if I could find myself a used copy and uh, I was able to get this one for pretty cheap. Uh, this is like a, a used library copy or something, or it says reference. I don't know where it was from. Uh, let's see, does it say? Uh, it doesn't say the name of, it doesn't say the name of the library or anything. It just says reference copy. Um, but anyway, yeah. So that's that's the another Isaac Asimov book that I picked up because it sounded interesting. And like I said, I, I started reading it and I, I want to finish it. So, <laughs> okay. Um, so let me go to my other hobby here, which is um, I like to play um, chess and backgammon. Um, I also play Zhang Ji, which is uh, like Chinese chess. Um, not well. I don't play any of those games well. I just enjoy playing them. Um, but I'm also hist interested in the history of uh uh, games, board games, uh, and there are a number of books that I enjoyed reading um, that I would recommend to people if if you if that sounds interesting, if that topic sounds interesting to you. The books I have here are all written by H. J. R. Murray, who is considered, I guess, like one of the big names in uh, the history of board games, at least dur during his time when he was alive. Um, the first of his books of his that I read was this one. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, a short history of chess by here. Let me see if this will focus on the name. Uh, by Murray. Um, this is a quick read. Um, you know, it's not too difficult. Uh, I read this on the train going back and forth to work. Uh, one week, and uh, you know, you can like I said, it, it reads pretty quick. Um, so uh, you might have to know a little bit about chess because he does like annotate some games and things um and some moves uh through the book but uh you know if you have a chessboard in front of you then you could also just you know uh play it out uh but yeah this is an interesting read i it got me really like motivated to get back into studying chess and, and so on uh but he also has a book on uh a history of board games other than chess by again hjr murray um, this was a print-on-demand copy. Uh, again, it's interesting. The only cr uh, criticism I have of this is not of the book itself, but um, the writing in it, it because it's a, a print-on-demand copy, I don't know if you could see, but for me, writing this small is extremely difficult to focus on. My eyesight's not that great, so this really strains my eyes uh, to read this. So I don't know if there are other other editions that you can get. Um that might have you know better quality print or, or larger print but the book itself is worth reading it's a it's an interesting read uh and then the last book by hjr murray that i have is his monumental history of chess so he had the short history of chess but he has a long you know, gigantic uh tome on the on the history of chess which is out of print unfortunately and difficult to find but i I went, you know, <laughs> I wanted to read this book so bad that I had to find a copy and I went searching all over the internet for it and I just managed to find randomly uh, a print on demand copy of the book uh, that split it actually into two different um, volumes. So uh, this is volume one of two and this is uh, volume two of two. Um, but it was originally written as one volume. Uh, but so here you could see the print on demand copy here is not that bad because it's the print is big. Um, so it's it's decent. It's just not the formatting is not great. 
um, because I, it is uh, print on demand. Uh, and the other option, the other uh, problem that I have with it is, which is not a huge deal, but in the second book, um, it looks like the printer, the print on demand printer started running out of ink. So there are some places where uh, the ink is a little bit um, faded. Uh, but other than that, it's it's pretty good. I, I got these for really cheap, too. I think they were like ten dollars uh, for per volume. So, you know, twenty dollars in total for a book that was out of print and if you ordered um a used copy of it online even used copies were going for exorbitant prices and i was like i can't i can't pay money like that for for a book on the history of chess that's ridiculous <laughs> but this one um this i luckily i ran across this um print on demand copy and it's good enough for for me i at least i get to read the book so uh yeah this is interesting if you if you like uh chess or you want to know about the history of chess um i would definitely definitely recommend or other board games uh i definitely recommend uh hjr murray um okay so those are my my other hobbies then we could get to the you know the topic of this channel here uh go i'll go through um some of the recent uh, things that I picked up that I uh, that I'm happy that I that I have now. Um, so let me go over. Let's see. I'll go over some of the stuff that I've already talked about before. So real quick, um, this book is fantastic. Theoretical concepts in physics: uh, an alternative view of theoretical reasoning in physics, third edition by Malcolm Longair. Uh, he has a bunch of other books that I also have, but I haven't started reading any of those. This is the the one that I've I'm in the middle of reading, uh, and I've only gone through chapter one so far, because um, I wanted to like he he does uh, the history of uh, the theoretical concepts in physics. Sorry, I can't even speak. The history of theoretical concepts in physics uh, through a bunch of famous experiments. So uh, I've gone through chapter one and I wanted to, the next chapter I think is on, uh, is it electromagnetism? Let me just double check. Um, I wanted to, to read the chapter on electromagnetism when I get up to, yeah, Maxwell's equations. I wanted to read that when I get up to um, electromagnetism in, in the studies on the channel. So when I get to uh, do that book by, um, oh, what's his name? I'm drawing a blank now. You, you guys know who I'm talking about. The, like the most famous electromagnetism textbook undergraduate. Uh, anyway, so that so that's a, a a nice read if you're if you want to know a little bit about how um, physics developed through history. Uh, another one I've talked about before. Uh, John Stilwell. He's one of my favorite authors, uh, which I've mentioned many times. We're going through a couple of his books on the channel. Uh, he put this one out, th this book out this year, The Story of Proof, um, Logic and the History of Mathematics. I haven't had a chance to read this one yet. I am reading in the middle of reading one of his, um, I guess, more popular style books. Uh, it's called El uh, Elementary Mathematics or The Elements of Mathematics. I forget. I have... Uh, I forget what the actual title is, but um, I started reading that one on my vacation over spring break. Um, so I haven't gotten to this one yet. Uh, and there's still a couple of his books that I want to read before I get to this. But uh, I, I'm excited for when I actually do get around to this. Um, so, yeah, John Stillwell, I always I recommend all of his books. He's a great writer. Uh, and then. Uh, a couple more things and then I'll show you like some books that I bought as like my birthday presents, I guess. So this book I, I'm excited to go through as well. Uh, Introduction to the Mathematics of Finance by Stephen Roman. Um, Stephen Roman uh, has a fantastic textbook on advanced linear algebra that I highly recommend, <coughs> as well as um, other things. He, he has a bunch of other books as well. Uh, he also has a YouTube channel um, that you should check out where he goes through um, different um, advanced math topics. Uh, arbitrage and option pricing, second edition. Uh, so I, I'd like to go through this topic on the channel at some point in the future. Uh, maybe not starting with this one, maybe starting at a, a slightly lower level, uh, but it is an interesting topic. So yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to getting uh, into that book. Uh, another book that I'm, that I am really glad that I picked up that is super interesting and really well written is this book here, Group Theory in a Nutshell for Physicists by Anthony Z. 
I highly recommend this book. It's so well written. He has like really interesting blurbs about, um, you know, famous physicists and mathematicians and, um, you know, his time in college or in teaching and stuff. Uh, and the, the, the mathematics is really well developed as well. It's uh, done in a really interesting way. Um, yeah, I, I highly recommend this one. It's uh, uh, This is a good read. And I don't think it's that pricey either. Um, you can even get this in like, like if you go to Barnes and Noble, um, you know, a physical Barnes and Noble store, they might, they might even have this on the bookshelf there uh, that you could pick up. Um, yeah, Anthony Z. Um, there's a bunch of books in this, in a nutshell uh, s series that are pretty good. Um, I have a, a few other ones, but this one is uh, one that I was debating on about going through on the channel, which I might still do, but we'll see when we get to abstract algebra. Um, okay. And then the next three books are sort of purchases I made. Uh, just, <laughs> I guess you could call them birthday presents um, because I, uh, all right, they, they looked really interesting. The first one is this one, um, Solving Mathematical Problems, uh, A Personal Perspective by Terence Tao. Fields Medal winner, 2006. Uh, if you're interested in math and you don't know who Terry Tao is, then uh, I don't know what rock you're living under, but he's probably one of the most brilliant mathematicians that are that's alive today. Um, he has a, a famous textbook on uh, analysis that's broken up into two volumes, which I don't have, unfortunately. <laughs> but this is a, a book that he put out. That's just a thin pamphlet here on solving mathematical problems for like um, math, I don't know, what do you call them? Like math tournaments or, or things like that. Um, I haven't really had a chance to look through this too much, but uh, I'm interested to see his um, his method of thinking through problems. Uh, you know, I, I'm sure there's a lot I can learn from him. So, uh, <laughs> excuse me. Let me see what it says in the back here. Uh, authored by a leading name in mathematics, the engaging and clearly presented text leads the reader through the various tactics involved. Sorry, it's hard to read in this writing here. Um, leads the reader through the various tactics involved in solving mathematical problems at the mathematical Olympiad level covering number theory, algebra, analysis, Euclidean geometry, and analytic geometry. Solving mathematical problems includes numerous exercises and model solutions throughout. Assuming only basic high school mathematics, this text is ideal for general readers and students of 14 years and above with an interest in pure mathematics. Terence Tao is born in, uh, they just give some, give some details about Terence Tao. Uh, yeah, so it sounds like an interesting read. Uh, like I said, I haven't actually had a chance to go through this one yet, um, but I'm looking forward to to doing that at some point. Uh, like I said, it looks like kind of a short read, but, you know, in mathematics, uh, the length of the book can be deceiving, right? <laughs> so, yeah, that's the first one. Uh, second one is I finally buy, bought the bullet and uh, I I never had Serge Lang's algebra book. But I was like, what kind of a, a math uh, enthusiast would I be without having Serge Lang's algebra book on my bookshelf? So I finally bought the bullet and picked it up. Uh, look at the freaking size of this thing. It is a doorstop. Look at this. Um, he, he really tried to get all of the algebra, every one of the algebras he got in here. <laughs> um, but this is a, 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 a notorious book. It's a you know, very famous, and supposedly the the problem sets are fantastic in this book. So uh, when we get to, if we get to graduate level algebra on the channel, um, I don't know. Maybe we'll maybe we'll try this one. Uh, the, although if we do try it, it might take me the rest of my natural born life to get through it. Like I said, look at the size of this thing; it's crazy. How many pages is this? Um, let me see. 893 pages long. So yeah, I, if there's a topic in algebra that you want to learn about, I, it's probably in here. <laughs> so uh, yeah, at some point, 
you know, as a math enthusiast, I'm going to have to do it, right? So I have it now. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's hopefully won't weigh down my bookshelf so much that it breaks the, the wood paneling or whatever. <laughs> uh, yeah, so surge line algebra, this is the revised third edition that I have. Graduate text in mathematics, Springer, obviously. Um, so that's um, second to last one. And then the one that I really wanted that I was like, okay, this is going to be my birthday, my birthday <laughs> purchase because I need this book. Uh, this is another one I started reading in my school's library. And I was like, oh my God, I, I, I absolutely need to have this book on my shelf because I can't, I can't read the whole thing in the library. You'll see why in a second. Um, and I need to read this whole book. <laughs> uh, the reason I can't read it all in the library is, again, this is another gigantic tome of a book. Um, this is Sources in the Development of Mathematics, Series and Products from the 15th to the 21st Century, put out by Cambridge Press. This is by Ranjan Roy. Here's the, the book and the title. Um, so... Let me just read out some of, um, or actually, let me read the blurb on the back so you can see what it's about, because I don't know if reading the table of contents is going to be helpful. Um, the discovery of infinite products by Wallace and infinite series by Newton marked the beginning of the modern mathematical era. The use of series allowed Newton to find the area under a curve defined by any algebraic equation an achievement completely beyond the earliest methods of Torricelli, Fermat, and Pascal. The work of Newton and his contemporaries, including Leibniz and the Bernoullis, was concentrated in mathematical analysis and physics. Euler's prodigious mathematical accomplishments dramatically extended the scope of, this, of series and products to algebra, combinatorics, and number theory. Series and products proved pivotal in the work of Gauss, Abel, and Jacobi in elliptic functions in Boole and Lagrange's operator calculus, and in Cayley, Sylvester, and Hilbert's invariant theory. Series and products still play a critical role in the mathematics of today. Uh, consider the conjectures of Langlands, including that of Shimura, Shimura Taniyama, uh, leading to Weil's proof of Fermat's last theorem. Drawing on the original work of mathematic, uh, sorry, mathematicians from Europe, Asia, and America, Ranjan Roy discusses many facets of the discovery of uh, and use of infinite series and products. He gives context and motivation for these discoveries, including original notation and diagrams when practical. He presents multiple derivations for many important theorems and formulas and provides interesting exercises supplementing the results of each chapter. Roy deals with numerous results, theorems, and methods used by students, mathematicians, engineers, and physicists. Moreover, since he presents original mathematical insights often omitted from textbooks, his work may be very helpful to mathemat uh, mathematics teachers and researchers. Um, and then you have uh, T.W. Kerner uh, gave a, um, I guess, a little blurb on the back of the book here. Who T.J. T.W. Kerner is another one of my favorite authors. Uh, he says. This book is a delight, uh, a delightful and seamless mix of excellent mathematics and good history. It should be in every university library. But in addition, I suspect that many mathematicians will buy it for themselves and keep it on their desk or bedside table to dip into. Um, and this is another book that uh, you can read it and you know you could skip around. You don't have to like read uh, from cover to cover. <laughs> but what he does in here is he goes through the the uh, development of you know different uh, types of series and, and theorems involving series and, and pro infinite products, um, but he goes through the development in the way that the original discoverer I guess went through it. So he you know there's a, a historical aspect to it, and he has exercises also um, that look really fun to. Um, to uh, go through and and to develop the ideas that he outlines in the section itself. Uh, let me see if I can read his, maybe we have enough time here, right? You guys don't have anything to do, do you? <laughs> uh, let me let me read the, his preface here. Um, so he, he starts with a, uh, a uh, 
quote by Weierstrass to uh, Kazarati. Uh, Kazarati, I think, also has a famous book on the history of math, um, which I don't have. But anyway, uh, let me um, read the quote to start with. But this is something very important. One can render our youthful students no greater service to, than to give them suitable guidance so that the advances in science become known to them through a study of the sources. That's Weierstrass to uh, Kazarati, December 21st, 1868. Um, and let me read um, uh, Roy's prologue, uh, preface here. The development of infinite series and products marked the beginning of the modern mathematical era. In his arithmetic, uh, sorry, in his Arithmetica Infinitorum of 1656, Wallace made groundbreaking discoveries in the use of such products and continued fractions. This work had a tremendous catalytic effect on the young Newton, leading him to the discovery of the binomial theorem for non-integer exponents. Newton explained in his De Methodus that the central pillar of his work in algebra and calculus was the powerful new, new method of infinite series. In letters written in 1670, James Gregory presented his discovery of several infinite series, most probably by means of finite difference interpolation formulas, illustrating the very significant connections between series and finite difference methods. In the 1670s, Newton made use of such methods to transform slowly convergent or even divergent series into rapidly convergent series, though he did not publish his results. Illustrating the importance of this approach, Montmort and Euler soon used new arguments to rediscover it. Newton further wrote in his De Methodist that he conceived of infinite series as an analogous and infinite decimal as uh, sorry as analogous of infinite decimals, so that the four arithmetical operations and root extraction could be carried over to apply to vari uh, to variables. Thus, he applied infinite series to discover the inverse function and implicit function theorems. Newton con concentrated largely on analysis and mathematical physics. Euler's prodigious intellect broadened, New broadened Newton's conception to apply infinite series and products to number theory, algebra, and combinatorics. This legacy continues unabated even today. Infinite series have numerous manifestations, including power series, trigonometric series, Q series, and Dirichlet series. Their scope and power are evident in their pivotal role in many areas of mathematics, including algebra, analysis, combinatorics, and number theory. As such, infinite series and products provide access to many uh, mathematical questions and insights. For example, Maclaurin, Euler, and Mac McMahon studied symmetric functions using infinite series. Euler, Dirichlet, Chebyshev, and Riemann employed products and series to get deep insight into the distribution of the primes. Gauss employed Q-series to prove the law of quadratic reciprocity, and Jacobi applied the triple product identity, also discovered by Gauss, to de determine the number of representations of integers as sums of squares. Moreover, the correspondence between Daniel Bernoulli and Goldbach in the 1720s produced the problem of determining whether a given series of rational numbers was irrational or transcendental. The 1843 publication of their letters prompted Louisville to lay the foundation of the theory of transcendental numbers. The detailed table of contents at the beginning of this book may pr prove even more useful than the index in locating particular topics or questions. The preliminary remarks in each chapter provide some background on the origins and motivation of the ideas discussed in the subsequent more detailed and substantial sections of the chapter. The exercises following these sections offer references so that the newer, so that the reader uh, may perhaps consult the original sources with a specific focus in mind. Most works cited in the notes at the end of each chapter should be readily accessible, uh, especially since the number of books and papers online is increasing steadily. Mathematics teachers and students may discover that the old sources, such as Simpson's book on algebra and calculus, Euler's Introductio, or the correspondence of Euler and Goldbach and the Bernoullis, are fruitful resources for calculus projects or undergraduate or graduate seminar topics. <coughs> Since early mathematicians often omitted to mention the conditions under which their results would hold, analysis students could find it very instructive to work out the range of validity of those results. For example, for a range of values, even where the series converge. At an advanced level, important research has 
risen out of the study of old works. Indeed, by studying Descartes and Newton, Laguerre revived a subject others had abandoned for 200 years and did his excellent work in numerical solutions of algebraic equations and extensions of the rule of signs. <clears throat> Excuse me. Again, Andrew Vile recounted in his 1972 writ lectures on number theory that he arrived at the Vile conjectures through a study of Gauss's two papers on biquadratic residues. It is edifying and a lot of fun to read noteworthy works of long ago. Um, this is common practice in literature and is equally appropriate and beneficial in mathematics. For example, a calculus student might enjoy and learn from Coates 19, uh, sorry, Coates 1714 paper on logarithms or Maria Agnesi's 1748 treatment of the same topic in her work on analysis. At a more advanced level, <coughs> uh, Euler, sorry, my, my voice is starting to give out now. Uh, at a more advanced level, Euler gave not just one or two, but at least eight derivations of his famous formula, sum one over n squared equals pi squared over six. Reading these may serve to enlighten us on the variety of approaches to the perennial problems of summing series. Excuse me. Sorry, I hope, I'm sorry that I'm, I keep coughing in your ear. Um, where was I? Though most of these approaches are not mentioned in textbooks. Students of literature routinely learn from and enjoy reading the words of say, Austin, Hawthorne, Turgenev, or Shakespeare. We may likewise deepen our understanding and enjoyment of mathematics by reading and rereading the original works of mathematicians such as Barrow, Laplace, Chebyshev, or Newton. It might prove rewarding if mathematicians and students of mathematics were, uh, were to make such reading a regular practice. In the introduction to his development of mathematics in the 19th century, Felix Klein wrote, quote, thus it is impossible to grasp even one mathematical concept without having assimilated all the concepts which led up to its creation and their connections, unquote. Whenever practical, I've tried to present a mathematician's own notational method Seeing an argument in its original form is often instructive and can give us insight into its motivation and underlying rationale. Because of the numerous notations for logarithms, for simplicity, I've denoted the logarithm of a real value by the familiar LN. In the case of complex or non-E-based logarithms, I've used log, so L-O-G. Uh, and then he gives, uh, you know, thanks to people that helped him write the book and everything. Um, so... Yeah, this is a this is a doorstop. But like I said, you don't have to read it from cover to cover. You can skip around. <laughs> but from what I've read, I, I only started um, in my my school's library. I, I read through portions of chapter one, and I haven't tried any of the exercises yet. But um, I was like, I this book, I have to own it. I have to have it on my shelf. <laughs> um, so you know, maybe we'll we'll, we'll see. Uh, aspects of this book showing up in some of the videos in the future. Uh, so yeah, let me just give you the title again. So this is Sources in the Development of Mathematics by Ranjan Roy. Uh, so that was my my big gift to myself this year. Um, so yeah, this is another one I was like, do I should I take this with me on, uh, you know, when we go on our, our next trip to read on the train or the plane or whatever? The only problem is it's, you know, I don't know, it's it doesn't feel like a good travel book because it's so heavy, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I just wanted to do something to cheer me up for my birthday. Um, I am in the middle of doing all those exercise sets. So those videos should be posted, you know, relatively soon. Uh, I'm almost done with the exercise set for Spivak. Um, so that'll be pro probably be the first word that gets posted, but you know, I still have to do post the exercise video for, um, for Taylor, for Schifrin, for Axler. So those are coming up as well. Um, anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Um, and maybe I'll make a, a, I'll end with a, a little bit of a plug. Um, if you would like to do donate uh, to the channel, uh, you can join the Patreon page, which uh, it basically you'd, uh, it costs 
five dollars a month and you'll get a bunch of uh, extra content for those five dollars so uh, at the moment i'm going through um blitzer's elementary algebra book uh, we're on chapter we're almost done with chapter four actually this week uh, we're going to finish it chapter four this week um and we're, we'll be doing a bunch of elementary math topics on there uh oh i wonder if you guys can hear that thunder that just happened outside <laughs> um so yeah, the, that stuff that's on Patreon is sort of like more elementary math that you, if you're rusty on, uh, you could use to brush up so that you can uh, tackle the, the more advanced stuff that we're doing on the YouTube channel itself. So anyway, if you do uh, take a look at that, thank you so much. Um, I'll see you guys in the next video. Uh, and maybe I'll, like I said, maybe I'll make another one of these videos uh, for Christmas, around Christmas time as well. So I'll see you guys then. Keep learning until that time.